Hello again, friends, and welcome to another segment here on Doc G's Wine and Spirits Review. It has been a while since I've spoken to you. I've been kind of busy since my friends and I got back from Paso Robles and the wonderful trip that we had um, in the middle of the month. Now that we've rolled into another month, it's time to come back and say hello. So welcome to today's episode, and um, I'm just going to call it Fall Back. So as you know, today is, uh, we go back to standard time, and I must confess to you, it's one of the days that depresses me most throughout the year. When I look outside and at five o'clock, it's already dark. So to counteract that, I'm going to share with you today two cocktails that are made with sparkling because I need to change the mood here very fast. So allow me to get started on that by sharing with you that wonderful sound. Taking a little sip of this wonderful sparkling, which I'll talk about in both of our drinks. Cheers and welcome to November, gang. Ah, so that's really good. I'll talk about that in a minute. So before we get into that, I would like you all to uh, I'd like to invite all of you to follow me on my YouTube channel as well at drglo53 and subscribe. I'm not selling you anything. I just like to have people watch what I'm doing. And you can also find me on Facebook at hashtag DGWSR, Doc G's Wine and Spirits Review. For those of you who don't watch a lot, I've been doing this for a number of years, and I would like to increase my following if at all possible. And for those of you that watch, feel free to add drink recipes or any adventures you have with anything to do with wine and spirits. So with that said, I want to feature today two different cocktails that require the use of a sparkling wine. I would recommend anytime you're going to use sparkling wine to make um, cocktails, so to speak, um, I would recommend keeping the, the price point a little bit lower, but you can do what you want. Some there are some recipes out there that specifically call for champagne because it's made a certain way. So you can do whatever you want with that. I'm using this one. This is one called Domaine Saint-Michel Brut. It's a Chardonnay and Pinot Noir based sparkling from uh, Washington State. And the best thing about it, it runs around $11, $12 a bottle depending on where you buy it. And it is wonderful. I just took it to a gathering last week with some friends and we did our toast with it and it was gone just like that. So um, I want to share with you today two specific cocktails, and um, I'm going to do them right here in these glasses that you see here on the table. And the first one is called the French 75. And the French 75 is a drink that um, requires gin and um, the bubbly, the sparkling, for its main ingredients. So let's make that drink right now. I've got the recipe right here on the table. We're actually going to make it here on the, on the spot today. Got myself prepared. So we'll get our ingredients. So the first thing that you do to make your French 75 is you combine your gin, which they call for two ounces. I'm using this clean, wonderful Pennsylvania made from Philadelphia Distilling Blue Coat Gin. It goes well in many, many cocktails, makes a fantastic martini. So there's two ounces of that. We won't need that big boy anymore, so we're gonna move him over there. The next thing you need is a half ounce of fresh lemon juice. And I must confess, I've never had a French 75, so I'm making this for the first time. There's your half ounce of that. Move that aside. And then we take a half ounce of simple syrup, which I prepared here. I use stevia simple syrup. You can use it just the same way. It's a one-to-one -one ratio with content. And in this recipe, you only need a half ounce because this is very sweet. You can put more if you want to cut down on some of the lemon. It's up to you. I'll let you know in a minute how that goes. So we set that aside and um, then we shake all that first. Until it, 
the important thing when you're shaking cocktails is really don't be afraid. It helps to mix the ingredients and it helps chill the ingredients because there's nothing worse than a warm cocktail. Unless, you know, maybe a bourbon or something like that, but that's not a cocktail, that's, that's just neat. So we strain it into our glass. They say a flute glass. I don't go by that rule. You put that in there. It's really a simple mix. We'll set that aside. And three ounces of sparkling. I'm approximating here. That looks like enough. And then you take a lemon twist. I always like to rub it on the rim of the glass, drop it in there, and voila, mes amis, here is my first French 75. I'll tell you in a minute. Won't be my last. That is such a simple, quick, and easy drink to make. Whew, that's really very good. It's changing my mood already. So I promise I'll post um, the, uh, recipe for it. I'll only be able to do that on Facebook. I, I won't do that on YouTube, but um, you can find it there at hashtag uh, DGSW or, or DGWSR. So go find that and let me have another sip because this is really good. Mm. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to set this aside so it doesn't get warm. I can have it later. So let's go to our second cocktail here today. And this one is called the Negroni Sbagliato. And I'll post that for you too. Sbagliato, you all know Negroni. I've shown you Negroni. It's Campari, um, sweet vermouth, and gin. Well, we're going to take the gin out and we're going to substitute the sparkling wine for, for the gin to make this drink. So in Italian, sbagliato is the word for incorrect. So this is kind of a wrong Negroni. It's not really the way a Negroni is made, but they say it's a delicious drink. I can tell you I've never had one of these either, but I'm about to now. So they ask you to fill your rocks glass in advance with this one. And then in a cocktail shaker, combine the sweet vermouth and the Campari. There's a little bit of gin left in there, but we're going to do that. We're not going to worry about that. And it's an ounce and a half of each. So there's the sweet vermouth. And my advice to you when you use sweet vermouth, buy the Carpano Antica formula. It's a little more expensive, but it really makes your drink worthwhile. Now, the Campari, this is a very, very um, nice garnish or a nice mixer. Nice, give a nice red color, along with the sweet vermouth, so we don't need those anymore either. So those are all by the wayside. So this one's a little bit easier to make. You just put this one in the glass, shake it up. And again, you really give it a shake. And this one has the benefit of also having ice in the glass. So this one's going to be really cold. color. Isn't that lovely? Right in time for the colors of the fall season. So we'll set that shaker aside now. We no longer need that. And then you simply top this off. With as much as your heart desires. I'm going to give it a little stir to knock down the fizz. Garnish it with an orange kick up that bitterness a little bit, and chin tan, chow. Mm. For some people, oh, that's fantastic. For some people, a Negroni might just be a little bit too overpowering, a little bit too bitter. This, my friends, is lovely. It's smooth. It. I wouldn't drink too many of them because there's straight alcohol in this one. There's no lemon juice, nothing, there's nothing but alcohol in here. You got your sparkling, your vermouth, and your Campari. So one of these 
to cheer you up. One of those other ones, maybe, to cheer you up and to get over this, oh, the standard time. Not my favorite time, but I'm gonna make that not feel so bad today by having these two drinks. So remember, at DRGLO53 on YouTube, hashtag Doc G's Wine and Spirits Review, hashtag DGWSR. I hope to see you. Please comment, please subscribe, and cheers, and we'll see you next time.